Welcome to worship here at Wesley United Methodist Church, based in Yakima, Washington. My name is Shane, I'm the pastor here, and we are so glad that you have joined us for worship and are joining us here on our virtual worship service. This week, we're beginning a series on the season of creation. So for the next three weeks, we're going to take time to look at creation from a spiritual and Christian perspective. The idea of this comes from the international celebration that happens during the month of September. The season of creation was first recognized in 1989, but became worldwide in the 2000s, in the early 2000s, when the United Church of Australia and then the World Council of Churches picked it up. And in 2015, Pope Francis declared prayers for creation in the month of September. And so we are celebrating with churches throughout the world, looking at what does it mean to be a part of creation during this month of September. We invite you to continue to worship along with us, and we thank you for joining us. God of unchangeable power, when you fashioned the world, the morning stars sang together, and the host of heaven shouted for joy. Open our souls to the wonders of creation and teach us to manage faithfully the riches of this earth. To the honor of your glorious name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Genesis 2, verses 4b through 22. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. 
and a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put a man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is the Pishon. It is one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there, and the name of the second river is Gihon. It is, the, it is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day of that, for the day that you eat it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought with them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And then he took one of the man's ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. The living word of God for the people of God. Amen. As I mentioned in the opening, we are looking at the season of creation. And so each week we're going to look at different elements of creation. This week we're looking at the power of trees. Now, as many of you know, I grew up in Kansas, where there's not a lot of trees. Now, there are trees and yards, but you just don't see forests. You don't see old growth or anything like that. But for me, trees have a special meaning. I remember growing up in my, the house I spent almost all of my life. There was a red maple tree in the front yard. I loved to climb this tree, to climb up and sit there and read a book, or to look out and peer out and think I was a world traveler or an explorer. I loved seeing this tree's leaves turn that dark red to see this tree lose its leaves in the fall and to grow back in the spring. Just a month ago, I took my kids to Mount Rainier National Forest or National Park and there we did the Grove of the Patriarchs. I'm sure many of you have done this hike. It's a simple hike, but there you get to see some of the oldest trees, not just in the park, but really in the country. There are trees there 500 to over a thousand years old. There is one tree so large, not all of us in our family could not make a circle big enough to touch each other's arms. This tree was so massive. You know, there's something amazing about the power and longevity of trees. I did some research this past week about how the power of trees and what they can do, not just for the world, but for us as individuals. Trees help remove pollutants from the air and put clean oxygen back. Trees are known to decrease stress levels and the overall well-being of those who spend time in the trees. Trees help boost the lifespan of wildlife, of birds and insects and other animals. 
1763, Edward Stone was suffering from fever and fatigue. And one day in his English village, he was walking out and he saw the willow tree and began to think about the willow tree and how it survived and lived, even in damp conditions. He took some bark from the willow tree, ground it up into a powder, and began to sell it to people as a cure for fatigue and headaches. Over 130 years later, a German company by the name of Bayer took his idea and created aspirin. The Pacific yew tree was once considered a trash tree that had no positive uh, purpose in society, but its bark and the molecules found in its bark have been synthesized and play an important part in cancer drugs to this day. I could go on and on about the power of trees. Even myself was just shocked by all that trees do. You know, I knew about the oxygen. You learned that in school in science class. But I was just shocked to learn about aspirin and cancer drugs and how important trees play into our daily lives. We in here in Yakima and in the state of Washington would not be where we are as a culture and a society and an economy without trees. Could you imagine what this Yakima Valley would be like without apple trees and pear trees and peaches and cherries and so on? There's something amazing about seeing how powerful and how important of a role trees play in our culture, in our economy, and in our society. Here at Wesley, we have our tree here in our backdrop of our sanctuary on our um, chancel. It's an apple tree, maybe a pear tree, but I like to think it's an apple tree. And it reminds us of our, of our connection to trees. But if you know anything about trees, you also know that they're in danger. Trees are struggling to survive at astonishing rates. 80% of the world's old growth forests are gone. 15 billion trees are cut down a year. And the global number of trees has fallen by approximately 40% or 46% since the start of human civilization as defined by scientists. Climate change is affecting trees throughout the world. We're seeing the Amazon burn at record rates and the dangers that has for our culture. At this moment, the world or the state's largest wildfire on record is burning in California. Oregon and Washington themselves are dealing with massive wildfires that are destroying trees that play an important role to our culture, our economy, and our world. You know, trees just aren't something that became important recently. Trees and the understanding of them go back for centuries and millennia. The role of trees in our world is so important that scripture reminds us of this. Throughout scripture, littered through examples, are trees and forests and the power of trees. One of the most well-known references is in Genesis, our passage we read earlier in the worship service. The tree of life. It is so powerful to know that when God wanted the example of what does it mean to live into fullness, to live truly into all the life that God has created us, he planted a tree. And in that tree is full of all lives, life, fullness, happiness, and also death. But there was another part of that scripture that even I missed the first time I read it. 
right before we're told about the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we are told that God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. God put trees on this earth for a reason. They play an important role in our society. They play an important role in our lives. But they play an important role in creation. So what does it mean as people of faith to care for creation, but also to know the role of trees? I think about that old red maple I grew up with. How important that tree was to me growing up. If I got mad or angry, I could go and climb that tree and sit in it. I could spend time feeling cared for and loved. I have such fond memories of that tree. What would it be like if we didn't have trees? What would it be like if we didn't honor the creation that God gave us of trees? We just saw them as a commodity we could do whatever we wanted with. But that's not part of God's plan. God's plan was for trees to have a purpose, to care for the world. That's why trees have given us such amazing medical achievements. That's why trees play an important role in oxygen. But even as I shared, just being by trees, it was interesting when I read about the well being of and how it can reduce anxiety of trees. I figured to go hiking among trees and climbing trees like I did, but studies show that even just looking out the window at a tree can increase your well-being and decrease your anxiety. God knows all this, and God knew all this from the beginning. And that's why the image of a tree plays such an important role in Scripture. Not just in this story, but throughout Scripture. And in the final book of the Bible, Revelation, we are told again about trees and about the power of a tree. So I encourage you this week, as you go about your week, to sit and look at a tree. To think about the majesty that God had in mind when he created that tree to think about the power of that tree and the difference it makes in creation. Our trustees have been spending the last few months doing some research and talking to arborists so that we can plant new trees here on our physical property at Wesley. We lost some trees this past year due to storms and disease, and so we said, let's plant more trees because we know how important they are. This fall, as you take a bite of an apple or a pear or a peach or whatever it may be, think about the tree that produced it and the role of that tree in all of society, in all of culture, and all of creation. Trees empower us to live in harmony in which God created. As God created all, as God thought about what a tree would look like and how it would be, I encourage you to take time as well to do the same. Maybe there's a tree like my red maple that I grew up with that you just love to think about and it has a dear memory for you. But I encourage you to spend some time this week thinking about the power of forests and trees within our lives and taking time to thank God for this gift of creation. Amen. I invite you to take an attitude of prayer. Together, let us pray for those who are hurting and suffering. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, let us pray for the joys of our lives. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Together, let us pray for the community in which we live and serve. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, let us pray for the world, its people, and its leaders. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you now to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. We continue to be in ministry as we get through this month of September. Um, we'll be coming up on September 20th. We'll be doing Sandwich Sunday, the third Sunday of the month at 1030 um, in our kitchen. We'll be preparing four to 500 sandwiches for a homeless community. A few days later on the 22nd, we'll be preparing a meal for uh, Camp Hope and Noah's Ark that Amy Miller and Sue Nelson will organize. And then that next week on the 28th, we will be providing the ingredients for a meal for Camp Hope and hopefully Noah's Ark as well. Linda Layfield is organizing that. We're gonna, for that meal, we're gonna become the hot dog church. And so once a month, based off whatever day works best for Camp Hope's schedule of when they don't have a meal, we're gonna provide the fixings for hot dogs. We're continuing to be in ministry. We also want to let you know that if you are interested in ordering a t-shirt, it's been in our um, weekly for about a month now, um, the order for that will close on September 18th. So we encourage you to take a chance to look at t-shirts. There are t-shirts in two colors, a uh, heather grape and a he an olive heather, a heather olive, that are going to have our logo on the front that has our tree, as our logo, and on the back it will have our mission statement of serving Christ, community creation. And then we have two polos we're selling, a coastal blue and a wheat polo that are gonna have our logo just in the upper breast corner. And the polos are being sold in a men's cut and a woman's cut. But we encourage you to go and buy one. Um, we need a few more orders so we can get to the minimum number that we needed to place our order with this company. And we may look at doing this again in the future as well, but we wanted to do this now as this was a project we had put on hold before the pandemic in March that we're picking up. So go and place an order for these t-shirts. You can register for outdoor worship every Monday. It opens for that next week and is open Monday through Friday. We would say if you forgot to register, you can still come and join us. We can only have 50 people, but we have not gotten to our 50 yet and any of our previous weeks. And we're going to continue to outdoor worship as long as we can, depending on the weather. We are continuing to be in ministry and to be God's people. And we're so excited that you are along with us, that you go along with us on this journey. To continue to do this work, we need your gifts. The gifts that God has blessed you with to support God's world. And so we invite you to continue to share your financial gifts, but also your time and your energy and your prayers with us. You can mail checks to the church, and we will check our mail a couple times a week and make deposits as needed. You can also go to our website, scroll to the bottom, and there's an online donation button. And there you can give using a credit card or a bank account as well. We thank you for sharing your gifts with us so that we can continue to be in ministry during this time and can continue to reach out to all of God's creation.
close this worship service. We invite you to join us again next week. You can always find our worship on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page or even our website. We invite you to join us in outdoor worship as well. And that registration is in our weekly and also on our website. And I encourage you, as I shared during the sermon, to look at trees this week and to see the gift God has given us as part of creation. And now hear these words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the, Lord, the Lord's face shine upon you throughout this week. And to all of those to whom love is a stranger, may they encounter in you a generous friend. Amen.